Hey folks, um, if you are here to talk about uh, songwriting for video games, then you are in the right place. Anyone not want to talk about that? Have a fear of discussing that? Have a phobia about talking about music? Okay, cool, cool. Well, I'm John Patrick Lowry, and uh, you probably know me as a voice actor, and my wife, Ellen McLean, also a voice actor. We've done a lot of video games, and some of them are famous, and some of them aren't. But um, I'm, I started out as a composer, and you may not know that. I, let me just ask you right off the bat, how many people here uh, have studied music at some point? Okay, so quite a few of you. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, and how many of you, and I assume that you are all interested in writing music for stories, because that's what we're here to talk about, right? How do we fit music into a story so that the music serves the story and the different ways that it can do that, right? Cool, cool. Um, so uh, how many of you guys here have written a song form before? Some, quite, quite a few of you, okay, cool. Do you guys write your own lyrics? Or you set other people's lyrics to, some, some do, some don't, right? Okay, cool. So you set other people's lyrics? You, you write your own. Okay, cool, cool. So, so when we're talking about music for storytelling, we're talking about one kind of thing, right? We're talking about something that is going to be secondary to the story, right? We're talking about something that is going to support the story but not get in the way of the story, right? Um, and that can be, you know, like scary music, exciting music, combat music, romantic music, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, when we're talking about actually putting a song into a game, you run into some very specific criteria that you need to meet, right? You want the song to move the story forward, you want the song to fit into the style of the story, right? So uh, let me ask you, what, what are some of the things, like just from a stylistic standpoint, what, what are some of the things that might come up as problems to, to solve? What can you think of, anything? Yeah. Make sure it's something that's easily listenable, like four hours on it. Oh, okay, well, very good point, right. I mean, if it's gonna be in a game, you're probably gonna run into it more than once, and so you don't want it to suffer the death of uh, so, so he says, uh, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll repeat the answer. Uh, you want something that is listenable to over and over again because in a game it may be heard over and over again, right? Okay, good. But, but I was thinking more along the lines of, of what kind of style it might be in and what, what are the challenges, what kind of things you, might you run into? Yeah? I was going to say, you need to choose the right instruments for the right moment. Right instruments for the right moment. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Tell you what, let's just collectively all move down to the front so we can all hear each other and because it's going to be silly everybody getting up and trying to go to a microphone to talk, so. And then go ahead. Uh, and if you're trying to write a scene for something that's more like, like an action-oriented, like fight sequence, you might want to do something that's more like, like rock or something that has more uh, beat energy versus a uh, quieter, like somber moment where you want to get that sort of so, so one of the challenges is to match the emotional pitch of the scene you're accompanying, right? Okay, cool. Um, but once again, I'm looking more for style as opposed to substance. Yeah. So, right, so the time period, can be, can, can be really instructive, right? If we want lutes and harpsichords, or if we want, uh, you know, techno pop, or, or something like that, yeah. Uh, also, like, our style of the game, we want to sort of bring out the art style of the game. Right, right. And, and, and that is, uh, is, is also involved, and in, can be involved with the time period, but also the artistic style of the, of the artwork, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Um, something that Right, now, now and here we're getting into like soundtrack stuff, right? Yeah, I mean you want it to be able to loop and uh, if you will notice in any, in any games that have atmospheric music, the, the music always never gets too far away from the tonic so that it can just fade out on the tonic and fade back into the tonic and, and take us around again, right? Yeah? Right. So the genre fits the style of the game. So if we have a game about 1930s gangsters, 
we might want to do some jazz age music, right? If we have a game set in the 60s, we might want to do some 60s music. If we have a game set in the 19th century, we might want to do some Civil War tunes or something like that. I mean, we, we can, but we want to find that style and try to duplicate that style because that can go a long way to setting the feel of, of walking through a scene. I remember the first time uh, uh, when I met Ellen on a European tour, uh, I was walking down the street in this little town in Germany, and you know, it had like German buildings and German food, but just didn't feel like Germany until I got to this one little place and they had like the recording of an oompa band, and all of a sudden it felt like Germany. You know, it was like these polkas were playing, and oh yeah, okay, this is Germany. I'm gonna get me some sausage or whatever. Um, and, and so th that can be uh, very helpful and can be very distracting if you get it wrong, right? Um, I think that uh, the game Elder Scrolls does a real good job of fitting those songs and fitting that music into the kind of the politics of the place that they are at. Um, so let's get into how do you generate lyrics for songs in video games? How do you generate lyrics for a specific scene, for a specific place, a specific time, and a specific mood? Any ideas? I'm sorry? Nonsense Latin Choir. Nonsense, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Nonsense Latin Choir. Nonsense Latin Choir. Okay, so, so fake Latin yeah. can, can be a choice. Right, right, so you can make, make up lyrics that don't make any sense to anybody. They're not in a language that anybody understands. That way you don't get it wrong because nobody understands it anyway. Okay, well that's a safe choice, yeah. <laughs> yes? I see. So you can write a song that has a lot of verses, and they can kind of pick a verse that's appropriate. Yeah, and you just have generated as you play the Okay, okay. I mean, I think that's. I mean, we're getting into. You're trusting the robot to do your work for you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And and and, I, and I've seen that work. Right. But but still, you you have to generate the source material first, right? And yeah. Right, right. But if we're talking about songs, we're talking about somebody singing those songs, right? And so that's either a character in the game that is part of, a central part of the game, or at least a character in the game that you see in the game that is living in the world that we're in, right? Yeah. Theme. Theme? It complements the message, the lyrics, as long as it's, it's, it follows suit with exactly it's displayed. Mm -hmm. The lyrics will complement. Right. So, okay. so, so, so far we've been talking about kind of world building, right? So far we're always talking about world building. We're talking about songs that fit into the world that that you know s somebody might sing in that world. What if we are called upon to write songs that the main characters in the game sing? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'll, you and then you. Uh, take a book out of Disney and either make like a I want sort of song where like the main character sort of sings about like what they're looking forward to and sort of like preemptively tell the player, hey, this is the journey we're about to go on. Or even just like a like hype up someone, just like something that could be like that character's mantra to sort of build their character that like they used to sort of try and get them through a hard situation. Cool, so you, you've hit on something that I'll, that I'll come back to, and you? Maybe like have the song like try diving in and digging up more of that character's personality, like a song that explains how they're a good guy or a song, the villain, yeah, the generic Disney villain song, the generic hero song, mm -hmm. a song that dives into their personality. Cool. So now we're talking about two, and, uh, and I'll get, get to you guys, but so, so we can go two different directions here, okay? Um, in Disney movies, we're really talking about musicals, right? Where, and, th and this is one absolutely legitimate way to go, where the story goes along and the world all of a sudden elevates itself to where a character who's just been walking around talking 
all of a sudden has their own orchestra and the orchestra starts playing and they start singing and it's this magical moment where all of a sudden we're into the world of music, right? The other way we can go is to be writing songs that actually the characters actually sing in their actual life, all right? Yeah? That would be something, <clears throat> sorry about that. That would be something more along the lines of when you mentioned world building earlier, that would be kind of like designing something along the lines of a folk tune, something like that, right? So, so, right, so something something that the character would sing, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm basically thinking of like two sort of uh, examples at the moment that uh -huh. one, one sort of complements the Disney side and one complements like the uh, world building side. Uh, on the Disney side, I'm sort of almost thinking of uh, uh, in Mass Effect, uh, the character Morden, uh, he like kind of just comes up with this quirky you know, like tune that he sings about how he's the best scientist in the entire universe. But it, but it sounds like it's something that he'd just make up yeah. and sing to himself. Yeah. Right. But 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 it was something that spoke to him. And Versus, uh, I'm also the other one that I was thinking of was the uh, if anyone saw the original teaser for Last of Us Two, where I think it's Ellie who is just sitting in a room playing on a guitar, singing an actual song. I think that's right, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Right, right. So, so, but here we have two different ways of, of approaching music in a story, right? One, which is kind of like opera, where we're telling the story and all of a sudden we have music to help us tell the story. And the other is more like a play about people who are musicians, right? Where our characters actually know how to sing and maybe play guitar or harmonica or something like that. And we meet them and they, they happen to break out this song. So there's two different ways you can go there. And both of them are useful, and it depends on the style of the game. Um, but, it's, but it's worth thinking about, it because one kind, you know, in a musical, in an opera, you are basically elevating the dialogue and supporting it with music and having, having the dialogue sung. You know, having the character, instead of saying something that's on their mind, they would sing something that's on their mind. The other way to go is have the character actually be in a situation where they're in the mood to pick up a guitar and accompany themselves and sing a song or a piano or a synthesizer, or you know, if it's in the future, or whatever. But that, so that, but it's two different kinds of songs, right? Because in the one case, in, in the musical, the character doesn't have to be a composer. The character is just a character. You know, in Frozen 2, Frozen, you know, she just starts singing, and she has a whole orchestra. She didn't write the song. This is just her emotional life being expressed musically by the writers, and we just accept that as uh, you know, a characteristic of the kind of story that they're telling. The other way to do it is we have the character is it, all of a sudden you're having to decide how, how good a songwriter is this character, right? How well do they write music? We don't want to write music any better than they can write music. We don't want them to be Mozart if they're just some gorilla out in the jungle, you know, gorilla fighter out in the jungle singing around the campfire trying to you know, keep their spirits up or something like that, right? So those kind of psychological questions should be always present in your mind when you're trying to come up with tunes, right? Um, how sophisticated they should be, if, if, they, if you're writing a musical, if you're saying the characters are just magically starting to sing, they can be as sophisticated as you want, you know? If they are actual characters coming up with a song or singing a song that they like, then you need to get inside their heads and say, what is their history? What kind of music do they listen to? What kind of music do they like? How sophisticated a musician are they? And, and, and that kind of thing. But you see how it, how it branches out psychologically. So that's definitely something to think about. Um, when you're writing soundtracks, of course, you are not concerned with form so much because you're trying to get something that can flow, that can, you know, if you move from this scene into that scene, your one kind of music can fade out and the other kind of music can fade in and it seems like it fits right together. So you're never getting too far afield as far as keys are concerned. Um, and you're really never getting too far afield as far as styles are concerned. You can, if you go into combat, then you can have, you know, more combative music. If you go into a peaceful place, it can slow down and, and soften but the style is basically going to stay in the same language and you're always going to be able to start something right out of something that you just start, that you just stop, right? Which is what your point, you know, fade in and fade out. But if you're writing songs for characters to sing that are actually singing 
where, where the character doesn't have their own magical orchestra, where it's not a musical, they're just in a place and they decide to sing themselves a song, that's a different kind of thing. And I think that most of the time, you're going to be a lot safer staying with a folk song kind of a thing, you know, a very basic you know, blues, ragtime, whatever the, the style happens to be of the period, but not get too sophisticated. And then, what is your job as a lyricist? When you're writing the lyrics, what is your job? Yeah. Uh, you, either one, sure, sure, one and then the other. Uh, yeah, well, I was gonna say it's mainly to convey, obviously, the emotions and message that you're trying to get out about this character. It's kind of the first and foremost there. If it's about them changing, or if it's about just who they are, or even about the plot itself, that's kind of the first and foremost. Right, now when you get into plot, then you start getting back into musicals and operas, right? Okay. Um, so when you get into, if you want to write a lyric for a character to sing, immediately you get into the world, interestingly enough, of acting. Okay, what would this character say right now? What would this character want to say? Why are they saying it? And what do they want to get out of saying it? Right? It might be a love song. They want, might want to impress someone that they're in love with and hope to get them to be in love with them. It might be they're just moody and they just need to get something off their chest. It might be that they're happy and uh, they want to you know, just celebrate. It might be that they want to manipulate people and get other people who might be feeling one way to start feeling another way, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and then we'll go you. I think uh, another important note to keep in mind when you're writing this sort of uh, song for a character to sing is keep in mind of what they already know in terms of like where they are in the story. Exactly. They can't know anything that they haven't already learned, right? Yeah, because that's going to stand out, right? It's like, how do they know that? Uh, yeah, and then, and then we'll get back to you, okay? Yeah. Um, the two ways that I can think of is kind of the loops where the character is able to see the lyrics, but the lyrics reflect on that and they're kind of music. And then in Witcher 3, with um, I don't remember who it is, the dandelion of love interest, mm -hmm. where it reveals stuff about their backstory. Um, maybe it's not necessarily that character itself is singing the song. I think maybe they didn't write the song, but the song reflects something about their backstory. Right. So you might want your lyrics to reflect maybe Right, right. And once again, I mean, you're kind of walking the line between opera and a play, because in an opera, the music actually is the reality, whereas in a play, the music is music added into the reality. Yeah. Could you mention the sort of difference between the music as kind of the supplement to it and the music, you know, being part of the plot kind of like in an opera? Was there an example that came to mind for me? And I honestly don't know how many people in this room have played Warframe at all. Uh huh. But the, the song that they used to introduce the Fortuna location, we all live together. It's akin to a uh, chain gang song. Uh huh. The lyrics. Uh, do a really good job of giving you just in that one song great of what exactly is going on without getting too far into detail. Well, and this is, a, this is a real good example because you, you can start thinking about what points in, a, in our lives, in our regular people's lives, do we incorporate music? And work songs are a great example, right? And particularly if you go back in time before radio, you had all kinds of work songs. You know, women would do would sing when they're out. You know, hanging up the laundry. Uh, you know, when, whenever they got together to do anything, there might there might be songs that they would sing with the rhythm of the work in the song. And chain gang songs are a great example of that because you know you're out there working on the road, building a railroad or something like that. You're swinging a hammer. You're going to be singing a song that is going to help you swing that hammer in rhythm. You're not going to sing something that doesn't help you swing the hammer in rhythm. It makes the time go by. But that is a specific instance where human beings, in reality, would start singing, right? And so, and but that, that that's a great example. Um, 
what are what are some other examples of what how we regular human beings in actual life when would we sing yeah um it kind of uh the idea that that, that, that came from what you were just saying was uh there, there are a lot of times where like a song that we know mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah. Thing will really resonate with us and people will ape their own like lyrics into it and in a video game like setting and the character might not necessarily be a famous musician or even a very good musician, they could be just enough that they have their song that it's like, oh, it's the song I sing when I'm sad. This is the song that my mom used to sing to me when I was young. And I kind of remember the lyrics, so. Yeah, e exactly. Like, oh, Anna or something. And and one thing we can do if we if you know if we want to keep in say say we want to do that, but we're on another planet, so we don't have any of the songs we have here. We can create songs that sound like say lullabies, or you know s songs that someone would have learned as a child or something like that, and we can make up our own songs like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some others? What what are some other times we sing? Yeah, yes, sir. We sing at religious services and ceremonies as well. Religious services, rituals, things like that. Lots of music there, right? Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'd say when it feels right. I'm sorry? When it feels right. So, ah. so like, as you were saying, when someone's hitting a hammer down uh -huh. in a pattern that's timed in a certain way, that, that kind of gives the ability to just sing and, and they complement the, the, the sound. Already. Right. So, I guess like a spontaneous. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's kind of timed right. So uh huh. Right. Time, you know, it's like a constant metronome going on. And when the beat is on time with the metronome, it makes it a lot easier to just right. sing out. And yeah. What about uh, uh, back back there? Okay. Yeah. In the shower. So so or sometime in private. Right now, and this and this is where you're not singing for anybody but yourself, right? Cool, cool. Well, so, I I mean, I assume that you don't invite an audience in while you're showering, right? So this, but but you know, it could be in a shower, could be off by yourself out in the country, or something like that. You're just singing for yourself. Yes, ma'am. In the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Resting. Yeah, so like around a campfire. What about if we go into a bar? Celebration. Celebration. Okay, right. Yeah, that's another ritual. Uh huh. Yeah. I know for me personally, uh, my father and me are both musicians. So whenever I go over there, if we get bored, we'll just be like, okay, I wrote this the other day. Like, and we'll just. So like fam family bonding, bonding with people, bonding with family, bonding with friends, right? Um, going into a dance club is another way. You know, you go in, it's a famous scene in Star Wars, you go into the bar, and all of a sudden there's a band there playing music, right? Uh, and you could have a singer, right? Oh, yeah. Karaoke, sure. Yeah, I mean, if you have a game, as a matter of fact, we did a game. Space Ventures hasn't come out yet, but there's a place where the characters go in and start singing karaoke, and it's some pretty silly stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was to say how to cope with friends. Basically, if you and friend, a couple friends know all the words to a song, you're going to yell and sing it out loud as you can. You're not going to care about how it sounds. Mm -hmm. fun. Right. So, th so these are, once again, we're talking about bonding, right? Any kind of a party, any kind of a gathering. Uh, you know, and of course, a religious ritual is a kind of a gathering. We're talking about bonding, just bonding on a spiritual level. A uh, party is bonding on a more casual level, right? So, so that's, that's a way. Um, what about what is one of the ways that music imposes itself on our lives, whether we want it to or not? Well, I would say like uh, mall advertisements. Like that. Mall advertising, advertising in general, right? So this is another way that you can uh, another way that you can put music into a game is music that tries to emotionally manipulate someone, right? So now all of a sudden, music's not a nice thing; it's kind of an evil thing, right? So, yeah. I was going to say the inverse of that, it could also help with emotions. Like if you're feeling sad, if you listen to sad songs, that might help you not feel as sad. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know this is kind of going back to the whole world or anything, but uh, uh, I was thinking of like in Fallout, how you have the pinpoint that just like you can go through radio stations. Uh-huh. 
Right now, and, and that and that is another. And now that's what I would call a realistic use of music, as opposed to a stylistic use of music, like an opera. Here's a guy just, you know, with a radio going through the channels, finding something that he likes, right? And and we can, and that gives us as songwriters the opportunity and the challenge to write a whole bunch of little snippets of stuff, so that something could be wrong and the other can be right. So this gets me to the next question. How do we interact with the feel of the game? What are the possibilities? What are the basic three possibilities of ways to interact with the feel of the game? Hmm? Now let's, not, now let's not talk about the type of game. You just have some game that has some kind of feel. How do you interact with that feel? What are the three possibilities? Yeah. One possibility I always think of is emphasis. Utilizing the music to... To reinforce the feel of the game. Uh huh. Like, I guess it's a little overdone in some ways, but horror games using sharp and dissonant chords to, to make a... Jump Very good. So right. So one way to, to interact with the feel of a game is to go with the feel of the game. Uh huh. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Okay. Cool. Cool. Right. So you can be in a fairly happy situation and all of a sudden play creepy music, and you know, oops, this isn't going to last. Right? But that's more back into soundtrack music, right? So what about just songs? Yeah. To subvert the feeling. So you can go with the feeling of the game or you can go against the feeling of the game. What is the third possibility and it's a bad possibility? No, to just kind of not be either for or against, right? Just to be something else. So, but, but being with the feeling of the game and being against the feeling of the game are two very powerful things to do. Um, and I think that you're going to probably 80 to 90% of the time go with the feeling of the game, but every once in a while you're going to want to screw with it, right? Whatever is going on, you're going to want to inject something just off the wall and different. So a very sad moment and all of a sudden happy music comes out, right? Or a very, a very happy moment and all of a sudden somebody's just singing something horribly dark. Yeah. Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite soundtracks is actually the Silent Hill soundtrack because most of the, uh, it's a horror game. Right? Mm -hmm. But most of the songs in those games are actually like pretty, pretty and calming. Yeah. Just like when you see all that horrifying uh, imagery, but like it's just kind of this just like jaunty guitar tune, like some happy violin. Like and and what does that do for us? What is what exactly does that do? It honestly almost makes it feel more uncomfortable. But at the like sometimes it makes it feel more uncomfortable, and other times it actually drives home the point. Like it goes with it goes against the feel of the game, which is more, but goes with the story that is like the characters that you're playing as technically belong at where they are. Like this is their punishment. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so, so some, some very important points there. Okay, and then I'll get to you, ma'am. Um, if you go against the feel of the game, it has to be psychologically genuine. It, you, you have to be able to support that this weird song would come into this story and this feel, even though the feel is completely different. Because we know as human beings, we're very complex, right? We can be walking down the street and having very dark thoughts, and all of a sudden, for no reason, we think about something else. We maybe see a light or something, you see another person, and it gets us on a different track altogether. We are psychologically important, or, or complex, but if we're going to go against the feel of the game, we have to be able to justify the psychology of doing something wild different. I'm thinking of an example that is so brilliant that you probably heard of it, where it seems to go completely against the feel of the game, but immediately is psychologically completely genuine, and that is the song still alive at the end of the Portal game. Right? It's like, who saw that coming? You just blew up a computer, it's all weird, and all of a sudden this little happy tune comes along. And as soon as you start listening to it, you realize, yes, it is perfect. Of course Gladys would sing that song to you. She's just that kind of person, right? So it is, it is psychologically genuine. We get it, but it's a complete surprise. And that's what we're going for when we're writing, when we're storytelling. 
the best thing we can do as storytellers is take somebody completely by surprise with something that an instant later seems inevitable. It's like, oh, I never saw that coming, but of course that's what would happen. You see what I'm saying? And this is, this is like kind of the ultimate goal for any song. If we stick too much with the psychological feel of the game at that point, we're just repeating what's already being told to us. You see what I'm saying? If everybody's sad and we start singing a sad song, it's like, well, we already knew we were sad. Why are we singing a sad song, right? It gets, it gets repetitive and boring. So when we're writing songs for games, we need to figure out a way to inject something new into the story and to inject tension into the story so we don't know how this is going to come out. Right now, how many guys, have, how many here uh, have done any writing and have done any story writing? Cool, cool. I mean, both of these, both of these uh, skill sets go together and work off of each other. Now, you had a you had a comment earlier. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. I just can't hear you. Right, right, yeah, 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 and and that can be great too. So that we're, we're actually using music to help tell the story, right? Um, I want to play you a couple of solutions that I came up with. Uh, Ellen and I were in a game called uh, Church in the Darkness. It was just released in August, and uh, the game designer knew that I was a composer, so he asked me to write some songs for the characters to sing. So we are in a cult camp in the jungle in South America. So it has to be simple, right? We're in the 70s, so very specific time period in music, and we're dealing with psychology, the psychology of these two cult leaders and how they're feeling in certain points of the game. And so it was my challenge to write something that was <laughs> interacting with the feel of the game, set in the period, so that the music was consistent with the time period, and psychologically consistent, somehow psychologically valid with what the characters were going through, okay? So uh, this first song is called, so I was thinking, okay, they're cult leaders, they're revolutionaries, how can I add something new to that? So I wrote a song called, I Don't Want a Revolution. We'll, we'll play that now. So the cult leaders are a married couple named Rebecca and Isaac Walker. And they take all of their followers down to a country in South America. And the player comes down there to rescue their nephew, not knowing whether the cult is good or bad. And, and we can't give that away, because that's part of the game, right? So here we go. want it even more tear it down tear it up raise it to its very core don't give me a soft solution deliverance is what i crave i don't want a revolution there is nothing here to save here to save a little left a little right doesn't matter anymore do we run or do we fight do we burn it to the floor I don't want a revolution purity is what I need you won't have my absolution until my people have been freed have been freed
devil here, devil there Who's the angel anyway? You may seek him everywhere The devil's gonna get his pay Don't give me a soft solution Apocalypse is getting here I don't want a revolution There is nothing left to fear Left to fear So, what were the kinds of things that I was looking to solve? One of, the, one of the things that helped me out, these guys were cult leaders. That implies religious ritual, right? So that implies they're probably going to use music a lot in their lives. It's not going to be surprising if they sing. It's not going to be surprising if they play guitar, right? That we, all kinds of, you know, tent meetings and revival meetings, very close into that world, right? So I had that to go with. What I didn't want is to let the player know whether or not everybody was gonna end up like in Jonestown and everybody was gonna commit suicide. They might be really sincere about their political beliefs and wanna do something good, and they might be apocalyptic to the point where they're gonna do something crazy. So how did I solve those problems? Did I solve those problems in your opinion? Tell him he sucks. That that wouldn't yeah, be polite. Well, something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, listening to the lyrics, it honestly sounded like they're neither really on no side. They're kind of conflicted in the middle, middle left, middle right. We want the middle. Yeah. It kind of sounds like they're not really on a side. They're lost in a gray section. So, so you can get some impressions about where they're going, but they're not all that solid, right? Yes, sir. That's what I was going for, right? Yeah, yeah, that I wanted, I wanted to, I don't want a revolution, I want something even more extreme than a revolution. And so we don't know where we are. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am, I just can't hear you. There's this element where we see And do you think that that adds tension? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, just the two words that really came to mind when I was listening were, like was said before, ambiguity and serious nihilism. <laughs> I also kind of got that feeling, and this is just coming to me as a music performer, just from the sound of the chords and melody, general melody. So, so, but this, you know, so I was confronted with this challenge of writing songs that these people might sing, and in the game, they're constantly talking over the PA system to kind of indoctrinate their followers and stuff like that. And I wanted to come up with a song with, maybe this is a cheerleading song of keeping the army together, saying, you know, the world is against us and we all have to fight or something like that. Or maybe it's just her singing to herself about her own inner demons, and we're not sure what those are. But, it, but that was the kind of questions I was addressing in coming up with that lyric and in coming up with that style of music. Did you feel this, the music was fairly 70s, fairly kind of late rock and roll kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, once again, I mean, that, but that was the, the problem I was trying to solve. And you can see that, you know, my solution was informed by that problem, right? Yeah. This is the perfect room to have this conversation in, right next to the to the Roman Colosseum. <laughs> Speak up. I was going to say it seems like there was definitely sincerity in the message, regardless of which side it was on, whatever the uh, singer was portraying with what they believed. About. Yeah, they they believed this wholeheartedly, yeah, enough to sing about it. But as but as a person coming into this cult from the outside. You couldn't really tell what they were really planning on doing, right? Because that's the one thing you can't give away. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, 
<laughs> Sorry. So can, can you yell? I don't know that. <laughs> Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That if you were somebody looking for a place that had a cause and wanted to make the world better, this, these might be the people to do it. They might be cheerleading, doing good things. Huh? Yeah. Right, and and I wrote another song that I can't play tonight because I didn't bring my 12 string, but it's a working song, and it's a really, really happy song, and it's one of the songs that you hear over the PA system, and she's just singing about, oh, let's get out there and plant the crops and, you know, hoe the fields and do our work, and it's all going to be great. And in the game, the player is discovering places where people have been whipped and people have been put in cages and all this kind of stuff. And so that's going entirely against the feeling of the game, but it gives a lot, of, a lot more texture. Well, let me play one more song that I wrote, and this is for the end of the game. And the game can end a lot of different ways, and that was another challenge, because sometimes it can end up, you rescue your nephew, you go back home, everybody's fine or it can end up at a to as a total Jonestown mass suicide thing. And coming up with a song that could be at the end of the game that expresses these two cult leaders' feelings after they've perhaps died or after they've perhaps not died was something of a challenge. And I came up with this, which I call uh, the Song of Forgiveness. Do this, I think so. along the way, the places where we lied, the causes we have lost and we have won. Was it worth a single day to soothe our foolish pride and do the many things that we have done? And we're lost along the way. Lost along the way. All the promises betrayed to bring us
when the answers finally rise like riddles in the mist we struggle to believe we're not alone all the sophistry and lies eternally persist however will we find our way back So, what was I trying to do there? Yeah. You know, I would imagine that, yeah, well, playing the big day, we had to go to school and stuff, and the song playing, I think, you know, you're supposed to reflect on the whole joint you took, and you know, all the joints that you got to this end. Was it all worth it? What kind of question am I? Cool, cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. It was definitely building up, I guess, sorrow. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. There's uh, really just as much ambiguity in the ending song as in the beginning. It, neither one really said anything about what these people have done. Right. Right, because the way this game ends up, there can be multiple endings. Yes, sir. Um, it's kind of like, kind of like a book before what we did the right thing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. A ambiguous. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Acceptance. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And this gentleman. Oh, yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh, it's pretty bitter sweet. Um, you know, it's major and then it's sour. Uh, the chord that you're playing is very Led Zeppelin. Well, and of course, Led Zeppelin was right in the period that I was going for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. So, so, so. I mean, it sounds like at least you guys think that I at least succeeded in doing what I was trying to do, and that is to give an insight into the emotional life of these people without giving away the plot, basically, right? And so, and that's and that's another challenge that we can. It's like, how much do we want to give away? How much do we want to, you know? The worst thing in the world of gaming is spoiler alerts, right? You don't want your song to be a spoiler alert, right? But you do want it to somehow inform and add new stuff. You feel, I mean, if you feel, if you, if you listen to that song, you would feel like you knew at least a little bit more about the characters than you did before, right? And I think that's one of, if we're writing songs for characters in the game, that's where we want to live. We want to be informing the, the player in a way that makes that gives more texture to the world, but doesn't give anything away. Right? Cool. Um, I'm trying to. We have ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Cool. Uh, do, do you guys have any specific questions that you'd like to ask me? Or you're just thinking about a lot of things. Maybe that's that. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and use the microphone. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and use the mic so everybody can hear your question because it might it be the same question somebody else wants to ask. So. Yeah. How many like rough drafts do you go through? Like, yeah, do you, yeah, do you? So, kind of what's, what's the process of actually getting something into a game, right? Right. Do you sometimes think you're about done, but then, nah, I don't like it. So, you kind of have to start all over from scratch. And so, how it worked with this game is that I would write songs and submit them to the game creator, Richard Rouse, and he would go back to me, oh, that's uh, kind of nice, but I think it's too specific. And so, I'd go back and adjust the lyrics and, uh, with I had a lot more apocalypse in the revolution song, and Richard thought, nah, we don't want to give too, put too much apocalypse in there. We don't want to make it too much one way or the other. And so, and so he'd get back to me, and I'd make adjustments to the lyrics. And, and eventually, we'd get to a song where, where everybody would, would like it. The working song, he was really worried about, because it was like so happy and so weird, so completely against the feel of the game, that he was worried that it would take people out of it. But when we played the beta, 
when people got to that song and then they and they saw the whipping post, it was like completely mega eerie. Is you know it, it, it ramped up the weirdness, you know. So that but that's kind of the way we did it this time. Uh, I saw somebody else. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Okay. Should I? Does this one work? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Yay. We have plenty of mics. Uh, okay. Sure. You. When you uh, personally write songs, do you start by laying down a harmony, or do you start with your lyrics? I, since I'm a composer first and a poet way, 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 way second, I will tend to come up with the music first. Um, and the music will give me the basic psychological world that the song lives in. And, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, a revolution song, I want a revolution song, kind of a, so, so it's going to be pounding, it's going to be, you know, up-tempo and stuff like that. And that gets me there, and then I start thinking about what the poetry is going to be and how amb ambiguous it's going to be. That's, that's my process. Yes, sir. So how do you feel that your voice acting work has influenced how you think about tone of voice and inflection in your music? Actually, I'd say it's the other way around. Since I was a composer and a musician first, I bring that into my storytelling. Uh, how I learned about tension and resolve, it was in music. How you create tension in music and how you resolve tension in music and how that creates structure and form. And in storytelling, it turns out to be the exact same way. You want to build up tension until you get to a point of resolution and a little bit of peace before you start building up tension again. And we had somebody over here. Is that, did I see somebody? No? Okay, great. All right. Um, I'm a first year music composition major at Shenandoah University. Yeah. I'm just wondering if this is something I want to do, write things for video games, where should I look to build a path for myself? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get so that. He's a first year student right. in music and composition. Uh -huh. And if he wants to get into this field, how would he? do that. Okay, so uh, I would say right off the bat what you want to do is find coders, find animators, find voice actors that are in school with you and start putting together projects and getting them up on YouTube. Yeah, put together your own project. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's how Portal got started. Portal got started as a school project. So, I mean, what you, what you want to do is get stuff out there that actually works that your music is informing the game, you want to get good people that are going to make a good game, you know, and, and when you start building those relationships, you might end up making your own game company. But you're going to get your stuff out there and you're going to have stuff to show people, right? Because that's, in order to get a job with a, a company like Valve, they hire people who already worked on the Lord of the Rings movies and stuff like that, right? They're looking for people who have a track record. But, so start but as making John your track says, record. the yeah. people who created Portal were students at DigiPen, and they presented their senior project, and Gabe Newell hired them, hired on the them all on yeah. the spot because their senior project was so good. So that I mean, just don't don't slow down, man. Get out there, find people to get with, and and start creating some projects. Right. Are there and, any online communities that can help out with this? If there's not people nearby, I th I think so. Yeah, it doesn't matter where they are. You know, you can find somebody in South Africa, another person in right. Iran. Right, we we you know. our primary writer for the the uh, audio drama company that John runs. He lives in Manchester, England. Right. So, and we yeah, talk absolutely. to him all the time, and yeah. he's the primary writer. And 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 with with digital, you can transfer information to each other. You can transfer you know music and animation and everything. You, you do not need to work with people close by you physically, right? Online communities are great. Uh, is there a particular website or blog or subreddit or something like that? That I wouldn't know. I'm just too all old. Right. You know, but you guys, <laughs> you guys ought to be able to, you know, just, you know, and but particularly if you're in school, you know, and you're in a music school, go over to the computer sciences school, go over to, you know, if there is, if there is some school that is teaching people how to code, teaching people how to animate, anything like that, go to the art school and say, hey, listen, man, I want to make a video game, I'm a composer, I need artists, I need writers, I need coders, I need actors. Let's let's put this together and create something. Yeah. And can you, can you hand the microphone back to that gentleman? Yep. Thanks, man. Good question. Good question. Uh, actually, I was going to mention something since you had mentioned that. If you are looking for something to try and network with other people, LinkedIn is always a solid option. That's what I've always been told anyways. Yeah, LinkedIn, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, listen, guys, uh, thanks so much for coming, and I hope you got something out of this, and I wish you all the luck in the world in your careers as composers.